Hey y'all, welcome back. So I'm in a different location today. I'm actually watching my sister's dog. So if the lighting is a little off and weird, I have tried to move around as much as I can. But today I wanted to start back my mental health series. So I used to do a therapeutic Thursday and I definitely want to get back to that. If you didn't know, right now I'm uploading at 6 p.m. every Thursday. So this will replace one of those videos and then one of those videos will be later on or earlier in the week, just depending on how I do it. So I have lots of topics that I have come up with. I, if you guys don't know, I am a master level social worker and I work in a psychiatric hospital. So part of what my job is, is to teach about mental health and coping skills and things like that so i have lots of topics let me know what you guys want to hear about next so here's the ones that i have come up with so today we're going to talk about boundaries but i have family conflict coping skills self-esteem goals um how to live appropriate with mental illness how to understand your diagnosis helping loved ones who have mental illness understanding autism, understanding medication, um, the stigma about mental health and how we can help, services available and how you can make a change to make our system better, recovery and addiction and mental illness, so how do you stay recovered, how to recover from an eating disorder correctly, brain development and trauma, schizophrenia and bipolar, depression and anxiety types and how to deal with it and medication and all the things that come with it um, understanding personality disorders and then my journey as a social worker so I have lots obviously I I just took a day and I wrote down everything that I feel I can talk about I don't want to talk about things that I am NOT an expert in and those things I feel I am so today we're gonna talk about boundaries. I have lots of notes, so if you see me peeking down every once in a while, I just like to do this. I do this in my groups as well. I have an outline that I kind of go by, but this is something that we deal with every day. And it's so important to talk about boundaries in mental health because it really can shape how a person is successful. So first things first, it has to be boundaries you have within yourself. What are your boundaries? How far are you willing to go? What is your threshold? Not just with other people, but with yourself. Um, especially when we're talking about depression, a lot of times we isolate. So placing a boundary within yourself that I'm going to spend this amount of time with people during the week, or I'm going to do my hobbies this amount of time. Now on the flip side, it comes with the family how far the families will let you go, and as well as how far will you let your families go. A lot of times when people come in, the families are just as damaged as the individual, and we have to work on kind of mending that. And the first thing I'm always gonna go over is boundaries. What do your boundaries look like? Do you have any at all? So, first of all, what are boundaries? Boundaries are, what are your limits? Like I just said. And what I say is, think about it like driving on a highway. If you were, if there were guardrails kind of blocking you, if you hit that car, or sorry, if you hit that guardrail, it's going to mess up your car for sure. But if that guardrail wasn't there, you just fall off a cliff. So what would you rather do? You get a little hurt in the process or fall off a cliff, obviously you want to just get a little hurt in the process. So that's what boundaries do. They protect us, protect other people, so we can live a more balanced lifestyle. And you don't always feel like you're either walking on eggshells or feel like you can't say anything to somebody or you'll hurt their feelings. We're going to talk about the three types of boundaries there are. No one person is one for all of them. Um, a lot of people are a combination. So what I want you to think about is the areas in your life. So there's going to be your relationship with your partner, if you have one. Your relationship with your family, if you have one. 
your relationship with acquaintances. So these are people you talk to on the regular, um, co-workers or people that you're not super duper close to. Then you're going to talk, think about your relationships with your best friend, then your relationship with your good friends. And then acquaintances are kind of friends, but you don't really spend time together type thing. And then what is your, how are you like with strangers? The first one is called rigid boundaries. And a lot of people have these with their families. So rigid boundaries are you have all your walls up. You don't want to let anybody in. In this category of friends, um, a lot of us may be this way with our family. And the reason you are that way is because you've been hurt. So it could be with a partner. You have a really hard time opening up. And when things get too serious, you flee because you are afraid of getting hurt. So some people have these with their families. Some people have them all around. Like they're just a very closed off person because of trauma or something that's gone on in your life. A lot of people um, who have been in abusive um, households with their parents have a really hard time trusting. Now, as far as like domestic violence, it's actually going to fit in another category. So just think of when you think of rigid, think of walls up. You're not really letting anybody in, sometimes not even your partner. So again, it's not all around, but it can, it can be for certain people. But a lot of times it's not. It's usually just one particular group. So the second type of boundary, it's called porous boundaries. And you might as well just call this no boundaries at all. You let people walk all over you. You um, pretty much say yes to anything. Like if you have a hundred things going on and your best friend says, I need you to watch my kids, even though you know you don't have time to, you're gonna say yes anyway, because you don't want to let them down. This is quite often with people who have been abused. It, usually people go one way or another. They're either going to be really rigid or really porous. So you just kind of let people take advantage of you. You care what I think of you more than what you think of yourself. You sometimes can just let your values fly off the window if you can make somebody happy. You're a very big people pleaser. You just don't know where that line is. You would rather make other people happy than protect yourself. But then again, you're hurting them too because if for some reason something happened to you and you weren't in their life anymore they are so dependent on you so codependency this is a big one so if you have issues with substance abuse a lot of times um, it's not only the substance it's the codependency of other people so you really latch on to somebody if you've been in a domestic violence relationship a lot of times boundaries are so blurred because you were in that situation for such a long time you don't really understand what are appropriate boundaries and that's why a lot of times people who go into one domestic violence relationship go into another one without even realizing it because the characteristics of abusers are very similar is it the fault of the victim absolutely not but um we tend to see that or if your your father was abusive to your mother or one partner was abusive to another you're more likely to Fight, seek that out in other people not on purpose but it's just kind of how you learn to know how it is and then the third one is healthy healthy is obviously what we all want to strive for so number one your opinion is the number one now when I say that I don't mean like you don't take other people's opinions into consideration but you don't completely disregard your own because somebody else thinks this way you take kind of both sides into account and then determine what works best for you. Um, you're able to say no to people. You're, and it, it sounds mean, but being able to say no to somebody is very important because you have to put yourself first. A lot of times what I see with caretakers is they have such huge hearts, but they have such poor boundaries because it's their job to take care of their loved one. And they don't take care of themselves. You, your care can only be as good as how much you take care of yourself. So for me, I work in the health and helping profession. And I tell every healthcare worker out there, you have to find a self-care routine that works for you. Whether you're on YouTube or um, you work in healthcare or wherever. I mean, I think everyone should have it. But especially those who are 
interacting with people so much. You have to figure out what your self-care routine is. I know um, my grandmother, she is 80 years old. My grandfather is 88. He is bedridden and she has to do absolutely everything for him. And you know, when I go and see her, I'm like, what are you doing for you? And she can honestly say, I'm not doing anything. I, I don't feel like I can. And that speaks more to like the resources in our country that literally insurance won't pay for anything. I think she gets like an hour a day where somebody from hospice will come in and help, but that an hour max, if they finish in 30 minutes, they're gone in 30 minutes. So, um, it's really important for those of you who are moms, dads, any kind of caretaker to really find a self care routine that will work for you. And I will go into self care in the future. I have, I'm very passionate about it because for so long I didn't take care of myself and I almost like ruined my career by um, just being so burnt out so quickly. So I'm very passionate about it. But so healthy, healthy boundaries is again, like knowing what you need and what other people need. So now I want you to think, obviously the goal is to have healthy boundaries all around, but what part of each relationship do you want to implement boundaries to? Is it um, somebody walking all over you? Someone saying, you know, really nasty things to you, like maybe a parent who just has no filter whatsoever and they just say really awful things to you. I, um, I'll give you an example from a client. Um, she, her mom was just over involved in her life. She did not like her partner. Um, she just really, really put her down Anytime that um, her partner would be brought up, the mom would say, you deserve better, they don't make enough money, da 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 So what I had her do and what worked was putting time limits and putting time limits and restrictions. So she only calls her mom once a week. She, if the mother starts talking negatively, you explain, I'm gonna end this conversation and if you want to keep talking to me, I need you to respect my decisions as a partner because we're adults. Um, most people watching this are most likely adults and you have the right to your own life and your own happiness. If your parents aren't paying your bills, if your parents are not contributing in some way, then your finances and your relationship are none of their damn business. That's all I gotta say about that so how do we make how do we improve our boundaries number one is make it clear what your boundaries are so i want you to take the time to write down what you think your boundaries should be and really think about them remember when you're implementing them there will be pushback 99 percent of the time there will be pushback because you have been letting this person treat you for this way for this many years um, if it's a new relationship, the sooner you implement boundaries, the better. But think about wh what you want with the boundaries. And I always say, think of it like a sport. The first time you do it, is it going to be perfect? No, but you keep doing it and doing it and doing it and it will get better. And I know for me, like when I've implemented boundaries, there was a lot of pushback. But when I was clear and said, this is my boundary, if you're going to cross it, I'm going to end the conversation or I'm going to not talk to you until you understand. Family members real quick were like, okay, I understand. I understand you have boundaries. And the biggest thing is to hold firm with those boundaries. If you slip even for a second, then you're going to have to start the process all over. So just stand strong. It's going to suck. I will tell you right now, it's going to suck, especially with our parents because they have been in, in authority our whole lives. And they have to understand like we're adults. We don't need to disrespect them, but we have to make sure that they know what we are saying is serious. Okay, after you've decided like what your boundaries are, I want you to like write yourself a little script. So let's say you're doing it with your mom. Um, you know, let's say your mom says something nasty because she says something nasty to you all the time. And here's a little script that I kind of have people use. You can use obviously whatever you want. So, hey mom, I really want to have a conversation with you. Blah, 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 saying something nasty. 
Um, I've come to the conclusion that I don't feel comfortable with you speaking to me that way. Now, this is going to be harder if you live with them. So, um, it's a different because, you know, like the my roof, my rules things. But let's say you don't live with them. And you just say, hey, you know, I don't really like how you talk to me like this. I understand I may frustrate you and I understand that you um, are upset with me sometimes and I absolutely validate those feelings that you have but I want you to talk to me like I'm a person and I want you to be calm and rational with me and I feel if you would like me to you know continue coming to see you continue being in your life I really need to be respected now I have done this before myself and like I said it's not always pie they may get real pissed off like, you can't tell me what to say. Blah, 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 blah. Just be prepared for that. You need to go into the conversation knowing that that's going to happen. If you know the obstacles you have to overcome, then it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to do. So she starts yelling and be like, I understand you are my mother. I understand you raised me. But I want you to know I want the most out of our relationship. And we need to talk to each other civilly. And I'm going to walk away now. I want to give you some time to think about what I just said. And then I want you to call me tomorrow and we'll discuss it. And then just leave. She may fight and argue, no, you got to stay here. Da, da, da. Mom, I really, I got to go, please. And every situation is different. Some moms won't let you leave the house, blah, 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 blah. But Eventually, you're going to leave, and you're going to leave on those notes. I want you to think about what I said, and then leave, and then talk, and keep holding strong to that boundary. Be like, hey, we talked about this. I want you, if, if you're passionate about something, that's fine, but talk to me like I'm an adult. Don't yell at me. Talk to, you talk with, to me with passion all you want, but don't yell at me. Because I don't know if every person know this, knows this, but when someone is yelling at you, you don't hear a damn thing they're saying. You hear the tone, and you were just listening enough to respond 99% of the time. So if you don't respond, or if you're not yelling, then a lot of times people can hear you more. If you go into the conversation, your mom's being nasty, and you're like, I'm placing some boundaries right now. You can't talk to me like that. She ain't hearing a damn thing you say. So you need to be calm and rational. Get yourself in the headspace where you know what's, you most likely know how the conversation is going to go and move forward. <laughs> it, it's difficult, but trust me, it works. It works. The thing is, hold yourself accountable. Make sure you're saying, hey, I need to hold strong to these boundaries, but also give yourself some grace. It's going to take time. It's like uh, a sport. You practice, 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 and you'll get better, but it takes time. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys. It's been so helpful for my clients' lives and my life. It, it's just it truly has made a huge difference. And just remember, it's a slow process, just like anything else, but it will definitely get better over time and I challenge you guys to write down some of the things that I said today and work on them. Thank you guys so much for listening to me. Let me know if you have any questions about boundaries down below or, and let me know what topic you would be interested in hearing from me next. I love you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye!